Hey everybody, I'm Grant from Chef Steps, and today we're going to talk about the science of searing stuff. You know, stuff. Like meat. Things that are protein rich are usually more delicious seared. And a lot of that's due to a reaction called the Maillard reaction. Without the Maillard reaction, you don't have tasty steak, you don't have tasty pork chops, and you don't have tasty chicken. Some folks call it the browning reaction, but really it's kind of the flavor reaction. It's responsible for developing color, aroma, and flavor in toast, coffee, pizza, fried foods, beer, nuts, brown butter, dolce de leche, and even suntan lotion. It's true. It's all my art. We're going to sear some chicken. So this chicken breast has a ton of protein all over the surface of it, and as soon as it starts to heat up, those amino acids turn brown. So what we're gonna do, try to get a little bit flatter surface. See now all the skin's on a nice plane. Beep. Easy. Now we're ready to sear. Salt is awesome on chicken skin and all that stuff because it's desiccant, so it pulls out moisture and it promotes longer lasting crisp in a skin or a surface later. So right now the chicken skin wants to shrink, but I'm not gonna let it. I'm gonna press on it. Don't worry about this rag. It's not on your chicken, this is my chicken. So you can comment about your own rag quality. Moment of truth. Ta-da. If it was round, I'd have just like a little strip of darkness here. So it's gonna be nice and dark, nice and crispy. Everywhere. I'm gonna eat that. Ta-da. We've got salmon. I want more surface area on the salmon. So I'm gonna score it. And you open up the skin, gives you more crispies and plus the salt goes in there. So that makes it extra flavorful. Oil. Don't drop stuff in towards you. Drop it away, because it likes to slap the oil away from you. Towards the camera guy. Lay it in the pan, leave it alone. Big one for fish. On the grill, you're like, oh shit, is it sticking or burning? I don't know why people do that. They're like, oh, is it sticking? It's like as soon as they put it down, like, yeah, now it is. The edges cook faster than the middle, so they tighten up and it makes a little cut. So you put the fish down, you press on it to push the middle down. You wanna make sure it sears. I like to do probably like 75% of the searing on the skin side. And I'm waiting for that little white line to get up to almost past halfway. Oh, it's gonna be perfect. Crispy salmon skin is so good. And then the second side only takes a couple seconds and you let it rest and you're done. So you have wicked crispy skin, super juicy salmon. Pork chop, we've got a double cut pork chop. What we're gonna do differently with this guy is start by searing all this beautiful fat and it goes from chewy to crispy. If you're going for dark and crispy, you're not gonna get that deep dark crust until the water's gone. So you can give it a head start by blotting it. Salt, oil, and we're gonna end up with even more oil because all this fat is going to render. So we'll start fat side down a serious searing though. If you're gonna do it, do it right. That's what my dad used to yell at me. Ta-da! It's a golden pork chop. You'll notice I've rotated this one a lot and played with this one a lot. It's because I'm nervous. No, I'm kidding. I've always found pork chops, I'm always moving them around, rotating them to get a nice golden sear. That is my arting everywhere. Yeah, and that smells super good too. Whoa. Doop. Bacon -y. Dude, we are getting some good sears today, guys. We've got the big boy, the steak. And this is like the ultimate way to sear a steak. You got like a hot date and you don't want to screw it up. And you bought the good meat tonight. So press your date. Salt, lots of salt. Don't be all scared of the salt. Put more than you think it needs. I love lots of garlic. I don't worry about picking the paper for this. Just give it a smash. Paper's gonna kind of fall off a little bit later. It doesn't really matter. It's getting a little dorky here with the pepper. I like roasty, seared pepper flavor. So there's a couple stages to what we're gonna do here. We're gonna sear it just a little bit on each side and then we're gonna baste. First, I'm gonna flip it. Got a little bit of sear. You see how this is dark red and caramely? Big gray spot, it's all wet and soggy. Gray spot, gray spot, gray spot. That's because the protein's cupping up and it's steaming. Don't put the butter in yet. Be patient, grasshopper. It's 
The garlic's gonna get some Maillard too. All this fat, I wanna sear that and get some color and render that. Render is a chef -y word, it just means like melt. Like roasty, Maillard-y fat too. Butter. How much should I put in? One, two, three. Three butters. Okay, here's what I do. If I have garlic, I keep them towards the front of the pan here, because that's where it pulls up. And then, base. And you can tell your hot date, you've done it a thousand times. This is no big deal. This will cook the steak really fast, because you're almost deep frying it. Just do this for a minute or so. Dude, look at this. That is good looking beef. Whoa, that's good. That's a good piece of meat, but it's got a ton of flavor from all that delicious Maillard reaction soup. Oh. <laughs> that's so embarrassing. Okay.